that's about oxytocin. There are some pathophysiological conditions associated with oxytocin, but we will not reduce, we will not discuss them uh, right now. We will we'll be able to discuss them in a, in a pathology, but the oxytocin, insufficient secretion of oxytocin is associated with lack of sleep, it's associated with lack of libido, and we know the functions of oxytocin. There will be no milk production if there is insufficient of uh, oxytocin okay so let's quickly look at uh, antidiuretic hormone adh this hormone we also covered it under uh, renal physiology now this hormone is produced by the supraoptic nucleus okay it is also secreted in small quantities by the paraventricular nucleus so from this it moves through what we call axonic flow okay so this diagram just showing the mechanism of axoplasmic flow, the mechanism of axoplasmic flow. So uh, it occurs with the help of molecular proteins. Okay. It occurs with the help of molecular proteins such as the kinesin, which uh, transports the, <clears throat> the secretory vesicles towards the terminal end of the axons. Then we have the dynein, which transports the vesicles from the axon terminal towards the cell body. So this is a axonic, axoplasmic flow. But remember the kinesin, they move faster as compared to the dynein. They are about, in some literature, they are about 400 millimeters per day. Okay. So this is called the anterograde direction. Anterograde direction, but this direction is called the retrograde direction. So, apart from uh, ox, uh, ADH, there are ADH and oxytocin, there are other substances which are transported by anterograde direction, like um, uh, viruses and uh, recycled synaptic vesicles, they are transported by dynein. Okay. In terms of chemistry, the antidiuretic hormone is a polypeptide which has a half-life of about 18 to 20 minutes. Okay, if you remember, oxytocin, the half-life was 6, so ADH is 18 to 20. Okay, in terms of amino acid, we said oxytocin has 9 amino acids, even ADH has 9 amino acid sequences. Okay, the action of oxytocin, of uh, ADH, is retention of water. That's why it's called antidiuresis. It prevents excessive loss of water. And also it's as vasopressor action, which is constriction of blood vessels. Now, how is ADH regulated? Okay, these are the factors that stimulate ADH synthesis or secretion. And these are the factors that inhibit ADH secretion. But the most important stimulants are increased serum osmolarity, decreased extracellular fluid volume, angiotensin 2, pain, nausea, feeling like vomiting, hypoglycemia, nicotine, opiates, and antineoplastic drugs. These stimulate ADH secretion. But the inhibitory factors, the opposite like decrease in serum osmolarity, ethanol, and alpha adrenergic agonist, atrio natriuretic peptide also stimulate, I mean, inhibit um, ADH secretion. So there is a connection between these factors, but we will not discuss. We we'll just look at the the most important, like the increase in serum osmolarity. How is it associated with ADH secretion? Okay, let's look at this diagram. Osmoreceptors senses changes in osmolarity, therefore triggering ADH secretion. We know the normal osmolarity is about two ninety milliosmos per liter. Okay, that's a total concentration of uh, all the os osmotically active particles in plasma. It's about 290. 
okay so how do these uh, osmoreceptors sense this and when they sense it they uh, stimulate secretion of ADH okay whenever there is an increase in osmolarity that is the increase in osmolarity can be due to dehydration okay you, you haven't drunk water for a long time the osmolarity increases above 290 okay it increases so the osmoreceptors these are the osmoreceptors okay which are located outside the blood brain barrier they appear to be located in the OVLT which is the organum vasculosum of lamina terminalis okay these receptors have aquaporin 4 so they will sense the levels of uh, water in the blood because blood is flowing through through them now the blood flowing through them has a high it is highly concentrated so water from the these receptors will move out by osmosis remember one molecules are moving from the region of water molecules are moving from the region where they're in high concentration to region where they're in low concentration so water molecules from the receptors will move into blood so this will cause the the osmoreceptors to shrink okay that shrinkage causes them to become depolarized and they will release excitatory neurotransmitters such as angiotensin 2 uh, atrionitriatic peptide and glutamate okay so these are the neurotransmitters that will bind here on the paraventricular nucleus okay the paraventricular nucleus will become further activated resulting into synthesis of uh, more adh or secretion of adh that is allowing the transportation of uh, adh from the supraoptic nucleus to the posterior pituitary gland okay so those mechanism will occur so the release of uh, neurotransmitters glutamate will activate the supraoptic nucleus things will occur simultaneously like uh, there'll be there'll be increased transportation of adh towards the posterior pituitary gland there will also be increased the synthesis of adh within the supraoptic nucleus there will also be generation of an action potential from the supraoptic nucleus via the hypothalamus hypophysical tract towards the posterior pituitary gland so this action potential will further cause secretion of uh, ADH. Okay. So this is just uh, how osmoreceptors change, uh, sense changes in osmolarity. In 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 summary, we are just saying that the osmore osmoreceptors will just, uh, whenever the levels of water are low, they will shrink because they will lose water themselves. That shrinkage causes depolarization of the osmoreceptors. They will fire an action potential, okay, which will trigger the supraoptic nucleus to start synthesizing ADH or to start transporting ADH towards the posterior pituitary gland. And also they will be firing of an action potential, which will trigger the posterior pituitary gland to secrete ADH. And ADH will move into circulation and it will perform its physiological action okay what is this diagram show whenever the plasma levels are low plasma volume is low there will be a decrease in venous return atrial and uh, arterial pressure will decrease okay this is the mechanism that occurs whenever there is low levels of blood they say somebody has lost a lot of blood 
due to an accident. So there will be activation of the baro receptors. We know that the baro receptors are located in the left atrium, the carotid artery, and aortic arc. Okay, so whenever the blood plasma levels become low, there will be decrease in venous arterial blood pressure. So the reflexes will be mediated in, uh, by the cardiovascular baroreceptors. Okay. They will send a signal to the posterior pituitary gland via the vagus nerve. Okay. And, and to the hypothalamus. Instructing the, the supraoptic nucleus to start secreting ADH. And ADH will perform its functions. One, there will be plasma vasopressin, increased levels of plasma vasopressin, which is ADH. And uh, the, the function of ADH, there will be increased tubular permeability to water and increased water reabsorption. And there will be re uh, reduced water excretion. And the plasma volume will, will go back to normal. Okay, we discussed this under neuro, under endocrines, under renophysiology okay so these are the actions of adh retention of water and and also okay the mode of action of adh is by, via the adenylyl cyclase mechanism okay you can look at this we discussed it's under the adenosine under the adenylyl cyclase mechanism Okay, and the vasopressor action causes muscle con constriction, the same mechanism of smooth muscle constriction where there's activation of uh, the, the myosin light chain kinases with uh, calcium camodulin complex. Okay, this is the mechanism we talked about. And then we'll end by looking at the sum of the pathophysiological conditions associated with ADH. We have central diabetes insipidus. In this condition, there is failure of the posterior pituitary gland to secrete ADH. Okay. There is failure of the posterior pituitary gland to secrete ADH. There is no ADH being secreted. So what do you expect? The clinical features could be secreting levels of ADH would be very low. The urine concentration uh, urine concentration will not take place, hence there will be dilute urine production. And the collecting tubes, we know they are only permeable to water in the presence of ADH, so they will become impermeable. And uh, because there is excessive loss of water, there will be increased osmolarity, there will be increased sodium in the blood due to excessive loss of uh, water. Okay. So treatment of these you need uh, desmopressin acetate. Okay, desmopressin acetate. It's, it's a very important drug used to treat uh, diabetes insipidus. Desmopressin acetate. Okay, what's the mechanism of action of desmopressin acetate? So, it's also called DD. AVP. It causes water retention and it blocks over uh, correction. Blocking over correction. Okay. So what do we have here? We have low cardiac output concentrated during stable hyponatremia. Okay. D causes the kidney to retain some water. Okay, that's what it does. It causes the kidneys to retain some water. And then we have uh, nephrogen, uh, nephrogenic diabetes. This one, the posterior pituitary gland is okay. Okay. The posterior pituitary gland is normally producing the IDH, but the principal cells of the collecting duct, they are unresponsive to ADH due to the defect of the the V2 receptors or the ADH receptors. 
or it could be defects in the in any pathway in any of the transduction pathways like it can be a g protein it can be a denario cyclase so there's defects in the in that transduction pathway so that's why it's called nephrogenic it's at the level of the nephron okay for this one the treatment are thiazides diuretics thiazide diuretics used to treat nephrogenic in diabetes insipidus we know the action of thiazide direct uh, diuretics from renal physiology they block the sodium chloride uh, co-transporter okay so these they will inhibit sodium reabsorption once they block the sodium uh, chloride transporter they will inhibit sodium reabsorption so instead of urine being diluted the urine has some sodium hence less dilute so without this treatment the extracellular uh, fluid volume will have elevated levels of sodium without this treatment okay the thiazide diuretic also they decrease glomerular filtration rate so the, there is less water which is being filtered and less water is being excreted the thiazide diuretics also they cause secondary what you call secondary extracellular fluid volume contraction okay hence in response to volume contraction the proximal reabsorption of solutes and water is increased Okay, that's about uh, nephrogenic diabetes okay so the thiazide diuretics they prevent increased osmolarity they prevent increased levels of sodium they even prevent uh, unnecessary high blood pressure due to these abnormalities okay and then the, we have this other one the syndrome of inappropriate ADH this is uh, excess secretion of ADH. Okay, the features, we know the function of ADH. So once, if there's excess, then there'll be concentrated urine will be produced. Okay, if, if concentrated urine is produced, the osmolarity will increase. So we need the drug that should inhibit the action of ADH. So we call those drugs ADH antagonists. Example is democlocycline. Okay. Okay. Or even water restriction can help. So physiologically, this works by reducing the responsiveness of collecting tubule cells to ADH. The use in uh, symptom uh, the use is in uh, syndrome of inappropriate ADH actually relies on the side effects. So democl uh, democlocycline induces nephrogenic diabetes insipidus. Okay, so it's just important to know the these pathological conditions. We know that central insipidus there is no ADH secretion. At the level of the posterior pituitary gland and we know that if when this happens we know the function of adh and nephrogenic diabetes insipidus there is unresponsiveness of adh receptors in the principal cells and then we have syndrome of inappropriate adh where there is excessive secretion of adh okay so that is about uh, oxytocin and antidiuretic hormone thank you